Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to Match Chats. And today we're talking to Mega, a young person from India who is in the middle of making a documentary about Huntington's disease in her family. Um, thank you, Mega. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so, would you just like to introduce yourself and your HD family situation? Yeah, um, so I live in India, I'm in Delhi currently. Um, I, I started making this documentary about five years back, I think when I was 22 or 23, so I'm 27 now. Um, I, I got tests, my father had Huntington's and he passed away when I was 22. Um, and then I started making this documentary shortly after he passed away. So our, um, he passed away in January of 2016 and, uh, our birthday is in August, so I went back to Calcutta where my family is and we started working on the documentary then. And it's just been, it's just been growing since then because initially it was a documentary about my father, then it became a documentary about Huntington's, then it became a documentary about other families with Huntington's in India. Um, I got tested while I was making the documentary and I tested positive. So then that changed a lot about, you know, how I was working on the documentary, things that I was perceiving. Um, and it's ongoing, it's been going on for a while. Um, hopefully it'll end soon and I'll actually have a proper documentary to be able to put out there. Yeah, from, from what I've seen of uh, documentary creation, it, it takes some time. So, so uh, don't worry about the ongoing part. Um, so what's really, I mean, I've, I've had the pleasure of watching a bit of your documentary um, and hopefully we'll have it available uh, soon, the full version for you. Um, but what was interesting to me was obviously seeing, seeing this family from India um, talking. Your family talks very, very openly uh, in the documentary about Huntington's disease in the family and about the situation that, that you guys had. Um, your mother and your, and your brother uh, also, you know, talked very, very well. Um, and I was sort of surprised about how, how open they were at that point. Um, and maybe I have uh, just, just my own assumptions about what Indian HG families are like. Um, uh, but I, I, you know, I, I don't know. It's something we can talk about is the Indian culture in, in a bit, I guess. But no, I think your, I, I don't think your assumptions are wrong. I also feel like with my family, I would say that after, after having in, or gotten in touch with quite a few families in India that have HD, I did realize that my family was slightly more open about it. They hadn't been that open for a very long time, but mm. it was also, um, I think, having. Um, a camera in your face 24 seven for a couple of years, you kind of forget that there's a camera after a point. And <laughs> it was, I was so curious about the fact that I hadn't, I didn't have answers when I was a teenager. Um, also at that point it was, you know, my mom was trying to protect my dad from, you know, letting us find out because she was really scared about how he would react to it. Um, after he was gone, she had, she had no reason to hold back. Mm. Um, and then after I had tested, it was even more about, you know, making sure that I was completely aware of my situation. Mm. So I was also actually really surprised at how open my family was. It's not that common. Um, it, it, it took a lot of years to get there. Um, but yeah, other families in the country, I, um, it's, it's a very difficult, dicey topic to, you know, bring about. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's not just Indian HG families that have those problems for sure. Um, yeah, <laughs> my family's had those problems for years as well, and, and so is everybody else's. But um, what made you want to do the documentary then? You said initially it was about your father, and it sort of grew. Um, so I, because I was already in the film line, and I always had an interest in documentaries. I'd made a documentary on my grandparent, on my grandmother. So I thought it was a, um, when I did go home to Calcutta, the first year that, you know, the, the first birthday that my father wasn't around, um, I thought it was a good way of putting the camera in front of my grandmother more than my mom and helping her talk about what had happened. So I think maybe, okay, I'll, I'll remind for a bit. 
when my dad passed away um was the same week that my brother got married uh and the wedding still went ahead but because we had a wedding i mean within 5 days of his death we kind of succumbed his death and we didn't speak about it at all as a family because we had something else to take care of at that point and then we all just went back to our lives so it wasn't something that we ever spoke about um so because i felt like my mom and my grandmother hadn't had the chance to really come to terms with what had happened um i thought it was a good time for me to actually talk to them and you know get to know a little more about my dad that i might not have known um and just make a documentary about his life in terms of your family when you said you wanted to do a documentary or whatever you said you wanted to do initially uh how did they take that i think they were pretty open about it um my grandmother was very very supportive uh, my mom was very supportive um my brother has always been somebody who's not very comfortable talking about this i hadn't had a conversation about this at all up to maybe 3 years back when i finally asked him if he could you know talk to me in front in front of the camera um but they were very supportive because i think they felt like this was um some form of i mean this was helpful for me and for and for the place my mind mental health was at that point so i think they forced to uh, you know they saw that way before i did um and then um it it took a little more time with my brother and it still takes time right now because um he is a lot more private about his life um but yeah they they were surprisingly supportive it doesn't mean that you don't have days where um i mean the few days that my family does get together in a year or something and i'm i always have a camera in my hand it can get a little frustrating uh, because <laughs> when we do things without the camera in front of us but um they're extremely understanding so i i'm just i'm very lucky that way did you get any sort of um any sort of backlash or anything from friends or or wider family that you had um i wouldn't i yeah i did get some i wouldn't i don't know if i can call it backlash in terms of what i did get from like you know extended relatives but it was the fact that you know does she really need to be doing this considering that she's going to have to live with this or you know can she you know put an end to this because there are other things that she can focus on in her life and you know there are more interesting topics for documentaries if, she, if that's really what she wants to be doing uh it did come from a place of protectiveness it mm. um but i also did have you know the instances where i had very close family um that had also dealt with huntingtons in their um in their tree that um were completely against me doing it um and were completely against me talking about their uh, family member that had it and um and it got very ugly um in the documentary uh or the part that i got to see was that what I, what made me laugh actually was when you you were speaking with your brother um and and he he was initially sort of blaming you for for being um not nice child for your dad who who had symptoms at that point um but then you were kind of saying no it wasn't me it was because i didn't know nobody told me and you know your brother didn't tell you and your mom didn't told you and then you both end up kind of agreeing that your mom should have told you <laughs> um so it that was a really nice nice moment um and it because it was just humorous as well the way you were kind of having the conversation it wasn't like oh seriously having a go at your mother for for not doing it you kind of understood where she was coming from um and i i found that that was very heartwarming um but i'm assuming you kind of had a you grew up grew up in a place where um huntington's just wasn't talked about um for a long time uh, and uh, at what point did you realize that that it was huntington's what your father had i think i would have been i think 17 18 is when i figured it out which is quite late uh considering he was showing symptoms way before that it's just um it wasn't just that huntington's wasn't being spoken about in my family because i i pestered my mom and i still do 
uh, I mean, even now about the fact that she never spoke to us about it. She spoke to my brother. Um, she never spoke to me because she always felt like my. Um, she felt like I I wasn't always steady mentally, so she felt like she was being protective of me by not talking about it. And so I felt like maybe because there was such a lack of knowledge around it, our parents didn't feel it was a great thing to talk to us about. Mm-hmm. I also think they had their own struggles. I think for them, uh, getting by on a daily basis and making sure my dad was protected, making sure that he was fine, was something that was enough on my mom's mind to uh, bring it up with her own children. So, when you were going around doing your uh, filming, doing your interviews with people, um, what is the kind of feeling? Um, that you were getting from 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 people who you were speaking to, from families, from other HD families, from other doctors about HD in India and about you doing this documentary. Okay, it was a little mixed. I would say that going by the doctors that I did speak to, they were extremely supportive. They also had a lot to say about Huntington's. I feel like there was a level of frustration I could feel in the doctors because there are such few places that you can trust with with HD patients in India. Mm-hmm. So I felt like for them it was something that was very important, you know, to go out and talk to families and have a documentary because it was bring about certain reach about the about you know Huntington's because then because the knowledge is is lacking and um, you know you you will have patients who will come up to these the same doctors that I spoke to and say that you know you've been giving me medication but I'm not getting better. I'm only getting worse. And then you don't know how to explain that to somebody. You don't, you don't have it in there. You know, again, I feel like I am lucky. I grew up in a place where English became my first language. So it's something that's easy for me to understand. How do I explain Huntington's to somebody who speaks Bengali or Kannada? It's, it's really hard. Um, so I like from them, the support was immense. They were in fact the people who got me in touch with all the families. I wouldn't have met any of these families and they wouldn't have trusted me to come into their home if it wasn't for a doctor uh, vouching for me. Within the families, um, it varied. So I spoke to four families um, and I'd also spoken to a couple of other families that I didn't end up shooting with. Most of the other families, obviously, I think the first issue was that they, they were very open uh, talking to me over the phone. But it was something where, um, you know, you either modulate our voice and we can't be seen on camera because there is, you have, you have a lot of issues. I mean, I think, so within, okay, so out of the four families that I did end up speaking to on camera that, that were comfortable with me coming into their homes, two families backed out in the process. I had, I, I met one family that was extremely open about, you know, their, um, the disease and I felt like that came from a place of privilege the the same place that I come from where you have the resources within your family to look after somebody uh, that you don't feel like you don't feel like you aren't protected but I also did speak to families I did speak to one family that were in a village um, that had zero understanding of the disease there was there's a a boy who's a who has GHD he was 22 when I met him so he must have been literally a year or two younger than me at that point, they had absolutely no idea what it was to the extent that when right before I had gone and shot with them, I know that within the village, when their father got Huntington's, apart from the direct family, uh, extended family and neighbors um, were fearful of coming into their home because they thought it was contagious. So they felt like if you touched him or if you were in the same room as him, you could get it. That's, that's how lacking the knowledge was. Now, I feel like the, um, the, uh, the psychological problems that you go through by having to deal with the lack of knowledge and, you know, something as horrendous as this is just, it's just crazy. And I think that's what I was expecting you to say about in um, Haiti. And it's just, you know, when you've got places, I mean, you know, here in the UK, we were there at some point with Huntington's, you know, it's just something that each country kind of goes through at its own pace. Um, so how do you feel that HD is treated in India? Um, and what's the awareness like, you know, touching on a bit more what, what you're just talking about, really? Um, 
I feel like the I feel like the awareness is very limited and it's also very uh, it's in pockets. So if you look at India, you will have big cities, and within these big cities, you will have certain doctors or certain clinics and hospitals that obviously can bring patients in, and that's where the awareness lies. The awareness in eighty percent of the country, or probably ninety percent of the country, is completely lacking. Um, you don't. and that i think that's also when it becomes difficult i i had the luck of going to a family that had been told that it was huntington's disease because they had traveled to a city where their father and this boy had been tested but i think you will find many places in the country where that awareness doesn't exist i another family that i had spoken to she had told me that um the village that her family comes from they might not know that it's huntington's but it's um you can tell when yeah. somebody has symptoms and what they tend to do because see, again superstition is something that's really big in india and they they tend to um, keep these people inside dark rooms because and that's where they stay and that's where their food is sent but they have zero interaction with the outside world um so i feel like uh, awareness around the disease is very very sparse um even within the medical community if you speak to um a ton of doctors or medical students it's not something that's addressed in their books it's not something that you study um, it sounds to me like you you would suspect that there'd be a lot of cases of hd that are just not not diagnosed or, or not yeah. diagnosed as anything at all and are just you know they're completely off off the radar yeah yeah tons and tons of cases like that that's mm. my opinion Yeah. because again I, mean, i think i'm assuming this happens across the world but i know in india you does almost everybody that does have huntington's that i do know of their first diagnosis is always parkinsons it's never huntington's because you have no idea what huntington's is and you're probably going through you know five or six hospitals before somebody tells you that you know you might have just found that magic doctor that tells you it's huntington's but you are under the assumption that is parkinson and you still don't know what it is you still don't know whether it's genetic you you don't understand what genetic is to even begin with in um in a in a tier 2 or tier 3 city in india if somebody tells me something is genetic which means that my father had it and my grandfather had it maybe my aunt or my uncle had it the assumption is that your family is cursed or you know there is a there is some black magic it's not the the science of it is lost yes from my perspective as someone who's seen a lot of hd documentaries i like to see something that is that gets the message across in, in a much more positive way um which i think yours does um at least the other yeah, version does i feel like i mean when i was uh, editing the trailer um one of the one of the things that my producer very strongly put down was that i cannot have a single shot of somebody crying so you just can't do that <laughs> and i think i really helped because he said the same thing it was just that it's a it's a burden enough for somebody to see something like this mm-hmm. uh whether you come from a huntington's family or you don't come from a huntington's family and to see somebody crying and complaining about their lives is one way of taking it forward and that you can't shun what is dark about this disease it's not that you can hide it but there is a way that you can portray it where there is hope that can be brought about through uh, you know what you show people you can't be you can't show people that you're in despair because mm-hmm. it doesn't get you anywhere so yeah and so, yeah it's just there's just not that many that do it but you're totally right and I, i i think uh, your your friend there has, has has sent you on a good path there because uh yeah it, it's just it's just nicer <laughs> it's just nicer not to have so much negative stuff thrown on on you know it feels really heavy afterwards you know um whereas if it's something nice the time just just by and you don't know oh, it's finished oh it's in that oh great okay. um which was how i felt with yours even though it was just for 15 minutes but it was still it just shot by you know um so i really enjoy that 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 side of um hitch documentary so i was i was glad to see yours was very uh, uplifting Um, that's great that's great feedback i'm really happy <laughs> you have my approval <laughs> um so thank you mega I, i really this has been very interesting um talking about documentaries and india and hd very interesting stuff and um 
I commend you for for doing it. Um, you're still just a young baby, and you and you're you're doing your what you can, and you're doing what you feel like doing for HD in India. So, um, well done to you, and and you know I hope it continues, and I hope things in in India get better with the help of your documentary and the work that you're going to do as well on top of that. No, I I honestly if. If there is anyone I can thank, it is the forums that I had on Facebook when I was seventeen. Because if I didn't have the support that I did get from places that weren't in India at that point, I mean, we we've, we've managed to create our own association and have our own forums only in the last couple of years. Mm. But I feel like for me and for so many other people, it was being able to go on to forums where other people were speaking about. And I feel like if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be making this documentary at all. So thank you for them for doing this. <laughs> Well, we're glad you found us, so no problems there. Um, I appreciate your time today as well, Mega. Um, and hopefully we will see you in the UK at some point with your brother. Um, yeah. Let me know. <laughs> um, but thank you, Mega. I appreciate it. And I'll, I'll, um, I'll end there. And thank you.